In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of branching inside of Git. The power of Git is not just being able to make a series of changes. Like if we just want to return to a, a previous state, you know, we can do that. But what branches allows us to do is we can have multiple developers treating this as the main functional build of the game. And then each one can pull off of any one of these commits, make add some new features, and then merge them back in. But we could potentially have multiple developers doing this simultaneously. And we're still looking at our master as our, our main build. But if any one of these changes that someone's trying to implement don't work out, then it's fine because we haven't we haven't broken the main chain of the build. So to put this another way, I'm going to Google something for you real quick uh, called, let's call this feature branching. And if you look at a diagram here, this is what this would look like. So we have our main branch that you could call develop, you could call master, it doesn't matter. The concept is we can pull off a separate state of the project right here, and we can add our feature and then merge it back in. Now, the reason this is very powerful is because if this feature just for whatever reason doesn't work out, then we just stop working in the branch or we delete the branch or whatever, and we still, we still have our main flow. And you might wonder why this is important. If you're working with multiple developers, you don't really want multiple people breaking the, the main build. And at any point in time, you want to be able to point someone to a working build and say, hey, you can grab the most recent build here. And then you can all individually work on your features and try to merge them back in. So merging is a whole nother issue. But for now, this is the concept. You can find other examples of um, ways to do branching and there's more complex strategies. But for now, let's let's just go with a simple feature branch and just learn how to make a separate branch inside of Get Kraken. So inside of Get Kraken, let's, let's say that I'm in my master and I just wanna add a new feature. And best practice to do this is you want to pull on the develop whatever branch it has the main build in this case it's master um, sometimes it may be called develop and wh whatever it is and i want to make sure that i'm in that branch if you have multiple just if you, if you have multiple just double click here on one of them or you can select the one right now i only have one and then i'm going to right click at this point in time at, at the most recent commit it's all it's good practice to branch off of the most recent build and develop so that you make sure that you're up to date with changes. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna say create branch here. And I have to give this branch a name. Now I'm just gonna name this after whatever the feature is because eventually we're going to remove it. But in this case, let's call this um, Wyatt Pox implementation. Okay, so once we have created our branch, you can see if you hover over here, uh, maybe I'm a level designer and I wanna start putting in some things to a white box. Once you've created this branch, think of this as just a pointer uh, somewhere in your project. And I can double click to switch at this point. I can either be a master or I can be in this new branch I created. Before you make changes, make sure that you are in, in the branch that you created. There's ways to pass changes around in branches, but I think it's gonna get too complicated to go into that right now. So just make sure that you're in this. Again, you can select it here or you can double click. So we have these. Now that I'm in my feature branch, we're, we're still at the same point in time, but now I have the ability to branch off into two separate things. So if I start making changes here, you're gonna see it pull off on the side. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna open Unity. I'm gonna open our Unity Kraken game. And in this case, you could imagine that these are multiple developers. Like I could be one of many developers trying to add features to this, I would make a separate feature branch and I would start working just like I am now. This would be the process. And I open it up and um, let's say as a level designer, I wanna set up some prefabs for someone to work in. So I would say uh, prefab audio pass, prefab um, environment pass, or whatever, and then maybe I add some prefabs here. Uh, 
Maybe also I manipulate the scene a little bit. You know what, maybe at this point I also decide that I should have been working inside of a white box level. So I'll also make a new scene. Save this off. And the scenes, we'll call this white box. Okay, we'll rename a couple objects. We'll call this floor. It, it doesn't really matter. The point is you're making changes. I'm adding a new feature or I'm adding um, modifications to something inside of our project. I save everything, I close out, and you'll see that we have some changes. Now, because we're in white box implementation and we have two branches, you're gonna see whenever I make this commit, it's going to start merging in, into a separate branch, just like we saw in the diagram. So I'm gonna make my commit, I'm gonna stage all changes, and I'm going to call this something like white box progress. And I'm going to commit. And you'll see that technically it doesn't look any different right now, right? Because there were no changes in the master, so we're still in a straight line. But I'm gonna show you something else. What if at a certain point in time, we need to merge our changes back into the master? So let's say that we're good with our white box progress. In order to actually get our changes from the separate branch back into master, we need to merge them back in. Now in this case, we're not gonna get merge conflicts because there were no other changes in master. We'll go into merge conflicts later. In order for other people to see my changes in master, I need to merge them back in. So to merge them back in, um, the way that you can do it in Git Kraken is you can just drag and drop. So I'm going to take this branch, I'm going to drag it onto master. And I'm gonna say merge, whatever the name of the branch is, into master. And you see what it did there? Um, because we are technically making a change to the master branch, because we're taking our modifications, going into master and say, make these modifications, we've made a new commit into master. You'll also see that it's local. We haven't pushed them up to, to the remote yet. It's nice to be able to look at the diagram here and get an idea of what's going on. But this is what we've done. We've created a branch here, we made some changes, and then we merged them back in. So what we need to do now is we need to go back into master and in order for other people to see our changes, we just need to push because we, we merged our changes back into master. Um, I double clicked here, just make sure that you switch to the master branch because we, we want to make sure that our remote is at the same place as our local push. And you can see now that our master has implemented our changes and we pushed our changes up to the remote if other people were to grab the master branch, then they can see our changes. Now, the other thing when it comes to feature branches is we don't, we don't really need this marker for our branch anymore. We have our commit and we'll still keep our branch history like this, but right now this is just floating around. It's just a random pointer that if we wanted to keep working in, in Whitebox, it's useful to be able to just take this and keep working. But typically feature branches are pretty short lived. So in this case, I also wanna show you, we could push this up if we wanna save the history, but honestly, this is a pretty simple change. We've completed our feature and we don't, we don't really need it anymore. You can delete an old branch that you don't even need anymore. Just make sure that you're not deleting a branch to plan on keeping long-term. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to my master. So double click or switch up here. You cannot delete a branch that you're currently inside of, so that's why I'm switching. But I'm inside a master, I'm going to right click on my white box implementation, or you can right click over here, it doesn't matter, and go to delete white box implementation. This is a destructive operation, are you sure? This just means that we are actually deleting something that, do, that we no longer have history of this thing that we're deleting, but that doesn't really matter, and I'll show you why. Delete, you see how we can, we still keep our, progress right here and you know if we wanted to create a, another branch we could we could do that but at this point we're pretty set on our feature we could make more changes if we wanted but all we wanted to do was get this feature implemented back into master and if we wanted to go back at a point in time we could we create another branch here to make some additional changes or we could just say we're going to make another branch here and I'll show you this 
You'll notice that we actually didn't push our branch that we created up onto the uh, repo. It's because other people don't need to know about it in this case. They just need to see that there were changes that were implemented into our master branch. So if they were to get the changes to master, then they would be up to date, which is cool. Now, let's say that I wanted to continue making progress on my white box. Well, I, I could very easily just, again, make sure that I'm up to date in my master. We'll do, we'll do this a little bit faster this time just to show you the process. Right click, we'll say create branch here. And again, I'm doing white box modifications. It doesn't even matter if it's the same name as it was before. And when you make this new branch, it automatically puts us inside the branch, which is cool. So again, if I start making changes while I'm inside this new branch, again, I'm, I'm not inside of master. I don't wanna make changes directly inside of master. We are making a branch for our feature, doing the changes and merging it back in is a safe way to work. So now we're over here, we make more changes. Um, in this case, we've decided why didn't we call these walls and we make our changes here. Okay, cube. Building, you know, we make another one. So forth. Okay, we save it, come out. And you'll see we're, we're in our new feature branch that we created. We'll say added buildings. And we're going to commit. And you'll see again, um, it's showing us inside of our separate branch, we're separated from master. And if master was updated, we may see that pull, pull ahead. So if other developers are adding to master, then you would see this move around. Let's say in this case, we know that we're the only person touching the scene file, like we're a level designer or something. And we're going to merge our commits back in. We could have multiple commits actually. I'll show you that. Let's come back into Unity. Now we could even add more things, more buildings some background silhouettes or something. Maybe we expand the floor. The wall going out, okay, cool. The point is we made more changes, close out, call this um, background buildings something. And you don't really have to make commits every couple seconds like I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just showing you what that would look like. Um, typically, you would want to complete a block of a thing, like, like a complete thing before you commit, just to make sure that you, you, know, you don't have too much clutter in your history. But any, any major change that you do, you do want a new commit. I'm going to commit that one. And you'll see we have multiple commits inside of our white box. But again, we need to eventually merge them back into master. So I'm gonna do that and say merge. White box modifications into master. And again, you can see our multiple commits and our branch once we, once we merge them back in. Also remember, our master on the remote repo, we can see by the icon, it's not current. So this is all still only local. And you also see that there is no remote icon on white box modifications. That's because we didn't, we didn't put the branch up there, which some cases you would, some cases you wouldn't. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna keep everything clean and keep them off. So now I need to switch to master. Again, I'm going to push my changes. So make my remote repo, um, get my local changes. And then lastly, I, I don't need this anymore. So I'm going to delete white box modifications, delete. And there we go. So you can see we could have different developers making changes in branches and merging them back into whatever the working development branch is. Now, the reason this is powerful is because if at any point in time there are bugs or there are merge conflicts or there's, there's just reasons why you can't merge them back in, into master, you can resolve those before you break the build that everyone's looking at uh, and working out of, which is very powerful and the reason that you would want to work this way. And again, there's more complex branching strategies. This is just a good starting point to learn how to, how to work this way. Um, but this is how you would start getting into a branching workflow and what that would look like.